All right, okay, so hello, dear Sayan. Welcome now to the second part of our video, pre recorded lecture on the Epstein Barr virus serology. Okay, and for this part, what we're going to discuss now are the different tests to determine your heterophil antibodies. So, why? Because again, um, it's a characteristic of your IM. No? Uh, if you're infected with IM, then 40% above the patients, and then su subsequently 90% bato they can produce heterophil antibodies. Now, what are, again, heterophil antibodies? These are antibodies that are capable of reacting with various antigens or different antigens coming from different species. So, example, if I'm a human, I have heterophil antibodies within me. These antibodies within me can react with the antigens coming from the horse, example, from the sheep, from guinea pig, no, from bovine. Okay? All right, again, so... We'll now go to the different tests to determine uh, these antibodies. And the first one is what we call your monospot. Your monospot is a slide agglutination method. And it tests the ability of the serum adsorbed with guinea pig kidney cells or beef, beef, no, beef, beef, erith, erith, what the, beef erythrocyte antigens to agglutinate horse red blood cells. So as you can see, ba, ang mga reagents kay coming from animals, <laughs> coming from different species. Because again, we're looking for heterophil antibodies. So it's an agglutination method. So easy lang to perform and it can also be interpreted easily. Okay? So, ang purpose niya is we want to determine if, if ang serum ba, no, ato ipareakdaan with guinea pig kidney cells or beef erythrocyte antigens, napabay antibodies, heterophil antibodies na mabilin no, para mo react ba sa imuhang horse RBCs. Okay? That's the point of adsorption. We remove cross-reacting heterophil antibodies. And the positive there is, of course, agglutination. So it means that um, this is really used for IM, for IM na antibodies, heterophil antibodies. Because ang heterophil antibodies sa IM, later you will also know that it, is, it can be adsorbed by guinea pig kidney cells. It can be adsorbed. All right? All right? So therefore, since na adsorb man siya, ah, joke, sorry, 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 mali, mali. Your IM heterophil antibodies, they cannot be absorbed, not adsorbed, okay, by, by the kidney, pig kidney cells, ang heterophil antibodies sa IM, but it can be ad adsorbed by the beef, okay? Ayan. So therefore, not adsorbed man here, alright? So therefore, napay antibodies, heterophil antibodies na nabilin. So therefore, pag-add sa horse RBCs, asa man ang naay uh, antibody uh, agglutination. Of course, there is a GPK. Positive job pag agglutination, whereas ang beef, negative na. Because again, your, when you say adsorbed, ang antibodies ni Monita put na sa beef erythrocyte antigens. So therefore, wala na antibodies na free na mo agglutinate sa horse RBCs. Okay? So that's characteristic of IM heterophil antibodies. Another test later, makasabot, makabalo po muna, inanayahang characteristic. Okay? But that's for monospot. And we use horse RBCs because horse RBCs are specific, Jude, specific, a more specific indicator of your IM heterophil antibodies, ang horse RBCs. Okay? Alright. Because sa, pre, sa succeeding test, what we use now are sheep, sheep RBCs na sa succeeding na mga tests after ani. But for monospot, we use horse RBCs. Why? Because horse heart RBCs are a more specific, they are more specific indicators of your infectious mononucleosis heterophil antibodies. Okay? All right. I hope na gets rid All right. Now, we go to the next step, which is the Paul Bunnell presumptive test. Now, this test is actually the more widely used or general screening test for heterophil antibodies. Okay. Now, uh, it's used to determine, again, heterophil antibody uh, in patients with infectious mononucleosis or IM, and serial dilutions are made, incubated with your sheep RBCs, which are the indicator na. So we determine for agglutination and all that. All right, and the title of the antibody, still the same, highest dilution that can cause agglutination. And significant titer is greater than 56. Okay, all right, ayan. So, but the difference lang is it cannot differentiate between the other heterophil antibodies, which are forced man, your serum sickness, and even the infectious mononucleosis antibodies. Okay. And it can also cross-react with forced man and serum sickness heterophil antibodies, which can lead to false positive results. Okay. So, it, bahalag ni positive ka dito, you cannot say na, ah, the heterophil antibodies is brought about by IM. It could be caused by forced man uh, antibodies or even serum sickness. Okay. That's lang the limitation of your 
uh, Paul Bonnell presumptive test. But by the name itself, presumptive Rama Pudja, it's not for confirmatory pa. Okay, and because of the limitations of that, of that test, we then can proceed to the David Swan differential. So you perform Paul Bonnell presumptive test, and if ni positive dito, you can proceed to the next test, which is the David Swan differential. So by the name itself, David Swan differential, again, performed only when the titer of Paul Bonnell is greater than 56. And by the name itself, differential test man, so it can differentiate the heterophil antibodies. So we can know good na kung sa man heterophil antibodies ang naa sa patient. Is it really from IM? Is it force man? Or is it serum sickness? Okay? So how is it performed? Uh, so, di ba nagmamadali? <laughs> Significant titer is dapat greater than 224. And we have three main steps. You have adsorption, the addition of cheap RBCs, and then finally, agglutination. So, same ragya po siya with monospot na adsorption. Again, a main purpose of adsorption is we want to remove cross-reacting um, heterophil antibodies. Okay? Alright, sige. So, we'll look at the, the steps. So, for adsorption, again, removal of antibodies in the serum. So, the serum is separated in two portions and then treated with adsorbing reagents. And your adsorbing reagents, still the same with um, your monospot, guinea pig kidney cells, GPK, and your beef RBCs. Okay. And then following the centrifugation, supernatant is mixed with your sheep RBCs, which is your indicator, and then tested for agglutination. All right. Now for guinea pig, okay, it can absorb or remove unsan antibodies, force man and serum sickness. Whereas your beef can remove serum sickness and IM antibodies. Okay, so we have a drawing for that para mas easy. Ayan. So again, unsa yung positive meaning na absorb siya or na remove. So kinsa na remove sa imuhang guinea pig, kidney cells, you have force man and serum sickness. And kinsay ma-remove, kinsay maka-remove, or, or unsay ma-remove sa imuhang beef RBCs, your serum sickness and your IM antibodies. That's why ako ang mnemonic, Ana, is I am not, <laughs> I am not, actually, unara, I am not a pig, okay? Or para mas clear good, I am not absorbed <laughs> by Pig. Oh, diba? I am not a pig. My brother is not a pig. Diba? So that's my mnemonic. I am not a pig. Meaning, your I am antibodies are not okay, absorbed by your guinea pig, pig kidney cells. Alright? Diba? So, kabalo na ka. So, not absorbed man siya with guinea pig uh, kidney cells. Not absorbed. So therefore, ma-adsorb siya by the beef. So, mawala ang antibodies sa mong serum kung adan o beef RBCs sa IM. If IM, heterophil antibodies ang naa. Alright? Whereas, ang serum sickness silang duhag yun <laughs> kay mawala or ma-adsorb siya. And, uh, force man antibodies kay sa guinea pig siya, kidney cells um, mo react or ma-adsorb. Okay. Now, take note of this. Okay. So, when you say again, adsorbed, it means removed. So, wala na antibodies. Okay? Wala na antibodies sa imuhang serum. So, therefore, nitapot naman siya sa mga either guinea pig kidney cells or sa imuhang beef RBCs, therefore, wala na free antibodies to react, if ever. Okay? So, take note of that concept. Wala naman, na-adsorb na siya. Therefore, pag-add ni mong sheep RBCs, the reaction now is reversed. Okay? Why? Because again, let's start with force man. It's adsorbed, di ba? Na-adsorb ang imuhang force man antibodies sa guinea pig kidney cells. That is why, that is why since nitapot naman ang force man antibodies sa imuhang guinea pig kidney cells, sa previous na na test system, di ba? So, pag-add mo sa sheep RBCs, wala na may antibodies na free, di ba? Wala na antibodies na free na mo react sa mong sheep RBCs. Therefore, negative. Okay? Sa so, agglutination. Gets? Whereas, sa beef RBCs, sa last, di ba? Wala man, wala man siya na-absorb sa imuhang uh, sheep, uh, sa imuhang beef RBCs, di ba? So, therefore, naapay free na mga antibodies, force man antibodies to react with your sheep RBCs. Therefore, leading to agglutination. Na get? So, opposite ang reactions nila. Alright? And for serum sickness, since, di ba, plus-plus man to, last na to, na-adsorb siya in both guinea pig and imuhang beef RBCs, therefore, wala na antibodies, serum sickness, na free to react with your sheep RBCs. Therefore, negative for agglutination in both sheep, or, uh, sheep in both the guinea pig kidney cell adsorbed serum, dere and sa beef RBCs na adsorb serum. So, wala na agglutination makita. Na gets? And lastly, for IM antibodies, which are what we're looking for if uh, are really infectious mononucleosis ba ang heterophil antibodies, since, di ba, I am not adsorbed by a pig. I am not a pig. <laughs> okay? 
So therefore, wala man siya na-adsorb sa pig, sa guinea pig cells. So therefore, daghan pang antibodies, free pa mo react. So pag-add sa imuhang sheep RBCs dire, sa serum, no? Um, katong gigamit na serum for adsorption sa guinea pig kidney cells, wala man na-adsorb ang IM antibodies, wala na-remove. Okay, so free pa to react. Therefore, pag adds antibodies dire, uh, sa sheep RBCs, mo react ra siya, positive. And whereas dire sa beef RBCs, di ba, uh, na-adsorb man siya, na-remove man siya sa beef RBCs, di ba, sa adsorption ganina, so wala na antibodies sa imuhang serum na pwedeng mo react. So pag adds sa sheep RBCs, no agglutination. Alright? I hope na gets lang. So that's how you um, perform the David Swan differential test. And what we're really after is the IM antibodies. Okay? I hope na gets lang. Alright, so as kabantay mo, opposite ang reactions nila. Alright, sa imuhang first, uh, sa adsorption and sa agglutination. Opposite ang reactions. Okay, alright, ayan. Now we go now, so again, those are heterophil antibodies. Okay? But again, di ba, as you can see, daghang heterophil antibodies na type. Okay, o sarang IM, Anna. Alright, so another way or another serological method for ABV is we detest, or we detect now the antibodies against ABV. Okay? And this one, guys, this table is taken from third join, okay? Ang board of examiners medyo kumukuha na, na sila sa third join. <laughs> okay, all right. Ayan, this is from third join. The characteristic diagnostic profile of EBV. Okay, so if stage is of course susceptibility meaning you're not infected or anything, so of course patient is zero negative. When you say zero negative, you don't have any antibodies to this particular um, disease or particular pathogen, okay? So susceptibility you don't have, okay? It lacks antibody to your VCA or your viral capsid antigen. Primary infection, meaning sugod pa lang, there is IgM to VCA, and EBNA is absent. Diba, recall that your EBNA is more on the latent phase na. Okay, so it's much more um, reasonable. Kay latent phase naman mo gawas ang EBNA na antigen, so therefore, wapa po yung antibody if bago pang infection. Diba? Kay latent naman, diba, latent is more on the later part na of the infection of your EBV. So therefore, wala ebna pa man di bang ebna dito pa mugawa sa latent di ba so therefore wala po yung antibody na ma-produce so IgM to VCA ang present kung primary infection high or rising titer still of IgG Ig this time of VCA and no evidence pa rin of ebna for at least 4 weeks of symptoms that's primary infection reactivation if antibody to ebna and increase antibodies to EA are present patient may be experiencing uh, reactivation. So, kung reactivation, EBNA and EA ana. So, mga letter E. EBNA and EA. Okay? Alright. So, yeah. Reactivation na. Kay latent man. Diba? Latent phase antigens man yung EBNA. So, if rising antibodies, meaning nagsugod-sugod na po dog infection or nagsugod na po siya balik, nagsugod na siya release of the EBNA antigens na increase in number. So, the antibodies also will increase. Okay? Alright. Ayan. And lastly, past infection, meaning na ayon na, Antibodies to VCA and EBNA are present. So how do you determine or how do you differentiate primary from past infection? EBNA ang lantawa. Kung EBNA na, ah, na ang antibody to EBNA, unsa man na, that's a past infection. But if wala pa'y EBNA, VCA rin na, ah, that's primary infection or acute infection. So kanisha guys, it's very easy to, to, um, to interpret. No, This is from third joint. Okay, third joint. And the next part is, this is now from Stevens because again, ang yahang appeal na is associated diseases na aside from IM. Okay, all right, sige. So for uninfected, as you can see, these are the different antibodies. So for uninfected, of course, by the name itself, uninfected, wala ka. So you don't have any of the antibodies. Okay, all right. And for acute IM, please take note, ang pinaka distinct yu daw dira, uh, or the pinaka useful marker for acute IM is your IgM anti-VCA. Please take note. Muna, according to Stevens, that is the most useful marker because, according to Stevens, it appears at the onset of clinical symptoms and disappears by um, three months. Okay, IgM anti-VCA. And, of course, it's followed by your IgG, okay, anti-VCA, which now persists for long term, for lifelong uh, immunity, diba? That's the purpose of IgG. Okay, alright, alright, okay. And aside from that, uh, according to Stevens then, IgG anti-VCA can also uh, indicate past infection. Diba? Paras po sa third joint, on sa itong mga antibodies na makitaan sa past infection, anti-VCA and EBNA. Okay? That's for past infection. Still the same, diba? Past, oh, diba? More positive. Tama, siya positive sa past infection. Anti-EBNA and anti-VCA na IgG. 
Okay, all right. And um, for acute primary infection, please take note kung unsan ang mga antibodies na. Ah. You have, of course, IgM. You have the anti-EAD. Okay, tama ba? Okay. And always, always the absence of EBNA. Okay, because again, EBNA antigen is um, latent, latent phase antigen. So, meaning sa latent phase na siya ma-produce. So, if bago pa lang ang infection, of course, wala yung EBNA na antigen na ma-produce, wala po yung antibody to EBNA na ma-produce. Okay, alright. Ayan. Okay. Alright, so, that's for um, IN. Okay, alright. Now, look at other um, characteristic profiles of your um, mga malignancies. Let's say Burkitt's lymphoma. Positive yung siya IgG, anti-VCA, and anti-EBNA ra siya. Uh, positive put. Okay. And nasopharyngeal carcinoma also, quite the same, um, quite the same um, presentation with your Burkitt's lymphoma. Alright? But, mas positive siya sa anti-EAD. Okay. Now, how do I memorize this? No, Para siya sa bakte, <laughs> mga plus, plus, minus, minus na biochem. You have two ways. Alright. Number one, you could memorize it, condition, pa column. No? EAD, minus, plus, minus, minus, minus. Ana. Okay? That's for you. That's, I think three ways there, two ways. That's the first one, column. Third is row, condition, uninfected, negative, negative. Acute IM, plus, minus, plus, 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 plus. Okay, all right. That's the second way. The third way on how you can memorize this is you look at the different columns and you look at the different, uh, you select no, the different mga characteristic. What do I mean? Example, anti-EBNA, kinsare positive. Asay mas daghan, positive or negative? Mas daghan ang positive. So therefore, unsa ra kong i-take note ang mga negative. So kinsay negative sa anti-EBNA ra, you have uninfected and acute IM. The rest of the conditions na ana. Okay? That's that's another way of memorizing. Uh, kani IgM anti-BCA, kinsa ra positive? Of course, ang acute, the rest negative na. Okay? So murag you look at the kung pila kinsay mas daghan ba? Ang um, kinsay mas daghan, siya ang imuhang dili i-memorize. Imong i-memorize katong gagmay. Okay? <laughs> Nagets ra. So like press aning um EAD, no? Same sa EAR, medyo equal-equal. So, pwede ka i-memorize ni mo ani by condition na. Okay? Alright, ayan. And then, yeah. And heterophil antibody, kinsa rin na, ah, plus minus, pwede acute or uh, acute and convalescent. I am. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright, diba? So, um, anti-EBNA also, di ay guys, as you can see, it can appear in convalescence, meaning ka ng padulo ng pagkaayo. Alright? Anti-EBNA. Okay? Alright, so that's how you memorize <laughs> mga tabular. Actually, very challenging po ang pag-memorize sa uh, characteristic profile, diagnostic profile sa imuhang ABV. Okay? But again, ang pinaka-important good is this one. Kung unsan ang mga antibodies. Does it mean primary infection, past infection, and anak? And of course, also this. Um, it's important inyo i-master kani. Alright? kung unsa na mga antibodies na ah, and then supplement that with these with the rest of the um sa bagay kani mga if i am kana nang after i am okay so you will know all right kung unsa na mga diagnostic profiles ang um, other malignancies okay all right ayan and unsa na mga antibodies makita sa acute sa past and convalescence again anti ebna can also indicate convalescence meaning padulong na siya o kaayo that's according to Stevens. Okay? Alright, that's for EBV or Epstein Barr virus. Sa akong boards, wala kayo ni gawas. Wala, wala ko ka remember na ni gawas. Siguro if na yung mugawas ka Davidson differential, like unsay positive, unsay negative. But I hope na gets rito siya. Don't forget our mnemonics. I am not absorbed by a pig. I am not a pig. Okay? Alright. So same table, di ba, with our bakte, mga biochem, di ba? Still the same. Akong, ako ang tip sa akong student sa bakte last sem. Always look for the defining characteristic yod. Like example, erysipelothrix rosopathy, the only gram-positive bacilli that can produce H2S. Nako, press the buzzer. Shara yun na. So, very defining characteristic. And sa mga tibos, also look at those na murag shara positive, the rest kay negative na. And then, if equal ang number of positive negative, then conditions na ka mo memorize. Na kani, if Burkitt's lymphoma, mas positive siya sa IgG. Or mas positive siya sa AAR. Parang ganun. Okay? Ayan. Alright, so just some tips on how you can uh, manage mga tables. Because tables are one of the ways na mas sayun jun ma-memorize or mas easy siya ma-retain. Ma okay, for me, I love tables then because mas bahig ang info. Alright? Okay, like sa para ni Mambernal na, na tables the best. As in very 
rit- ma- masayon siya maritain. Kaysa, kaysa ka ng paragraph gani, kay murag mas daghan na magung words. Alright. Whereas for tables, dire-diretso na ang, ang flow of info ba. Pwede yung row or ganang kag column ba. Just some tips naman. Okay. Some of the tips that I, some of the ways that I used during the board exam. Alright. And aside from that, the I guys, no, um, there are a lot of ways to determine these antibodies, EBV antibodies. But the gold standard, okay, the gold standard, when you say gold standard, diba, um, the reference method, shagyud ang, ang gina refer, shagyud ang inspiration, or siya ang gina follow. The gold standard for these det- determination of these antibodies are immunofluorescence assays. Okay, this is from Stevens. Fluorescence assays or IFA. Okay. IFA. Kasi sa board exam, dagang kayong ganansan na ng mga question na gold standard, reference method, no? So at least, now you know. So the gold standard for EBV antibody detection is immunofluorescence assays, IFA. Alright. And basically, that's the end of our lecture on EBV serology. And true enough, may rapod na muna akong last na chika. It's because our next topic will now focus on a different type of immunoassays, not any more precipitation and agglutination. If you have noticed, di ba, precipitation and agglutination, and then ang following topics na to, mga serological tests, usually they focus more on agglutination or precipitation. No? So the next topic now, we're going to start first with the non- another type of immunoassays, which are your labeled immunoassays, and one of that is immunofluorescence. So meaning it uses uh, fluorescence, no? Um, so, sana all na label, di ba? Label the amino acids, alright? So, that's our next topic, which is quite challenging for me, Lord Jesus. I need your intervention. Sana naman. So, label the amino acids. So, we use labels, yes. And then, after label amino acids, the different tests na po that use as labeled amino acids. That use labeled amino acids, alright? So, it's quite a mouthful, good guys, and medyo complex for me, ha? Um, concepts, but I hope, I hope lang yun, ma-deliver na ko siya. Woo, very challenging, but yes, I'll, I'll do my best. Okay, but anyway, that's all for the EBV, yeah? Sana all, <laughs> sana all, my happy ending. <laughs> happy lang, walang ending, charot, yes. Only, char- anyway, again, always make sure, ha? Check your partners. Also, check yourself din naman. Always be hygienic, alright? Alam nyo na, yung mga pwede nyo makuha, ng mga disease sa mga ganyan na mga activities, okay? Not to judge, okay? Always just practice safely. Alright? Okay, ayan. Nahimong sex education, bag bigla. Yes, dapat lang, no? We should be more aware of sex education. Yes naman. Alright, okay, so that's all for EBV serology, guys. Again, if you have any questions, do not be shy, Jude. Feel free to chat in our GC or PM me. Alright, and I'll respond when I can. Okay, so again, I'll see you in the next pre-recorded lecture. I hope nakasabot mo, Ani. Alright, and nalingaw rapon mo, hopefully. Alright, so again, I'll see you in the next pre-recorded lecture, dears. Thank you so much for watching, all right, and have a great day and keep safe.